Put on your mental track shoes and run with me. This is the Pow Wow with Myra. Welcome, everyone. In today's episode, we have Colton with Chiropractic. Patriot Chiropractic. Pa- Patriot Chiropractic. I'm sorry, I literally just asked you. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so tell me, tell me a little in Fort Worth. Yep. Tell me a little bit about yourself, um, who you are as a person, and um, what you do on the daily. Yeah, for sure. Um, like she said, my name is Colin Purcell from Fort Worth, Texas, born and raised Fort Worth. Um, I keep trying to leave Fort Worth, and I keep end up coming <laughs> back. Uh, but it's been it's been a fun journey, and it's it's I've been all over the world, and it's an amazing city to live in. It's an amazing city to grow up in, and now it's been an amazing city to start a business in. Mm. Um, so I I really love Fort Worth, and the fact that it's small but big is super fun. Um, and yeah, so I'm a, I'm a chiropractor. We really specialize on golfers, runners, and mm. lifelong athletes. So a lot of our patients come in, I want to keep doing X, not mm. I'm in pain, help me. Oh, okay. So that's I think that's really the big difference between most of our patients is that you you think oh I'm in pain help mm-hmm. it's no the pain is limiting me from doing golf the pain is limiting me from picking up my kids the pain is limiting me from running this marathon right and it's can you help me get back to that not can you help me get out of pain I think that's a big difference for our our community that we've kind of built. Um, Hmm. It's kind of a big difference. Uh, so do you have like experience with like other types of chiropractic places that yeah, maybe? Yeah. So my kind of my story on like how I got into this, mm-hmm. I knew I wanted to be in the health and fitness world, um, kinesiology background, played college basketball, stayed in athletics um, through through college. And then I had an, a back injury that really, really set me back and kind of shook up my world a bit. And I tried physical therapy, I tried medication, I tried shots, all that stuff. And it was just, none of this was, nobody was listening to to what I, what I was saying my problem was. Mm. It was, we're going to just do this because this is what we do. It mm. wasn't, what's really going on? Like, what's the source of your problem? For me, it was, I felt really strong, but at this one instant, I was instantly very weak. Hmm. And so we, nobody was addressing why were you weak at this point versus let's get you back to your, what made you strong. Okay. So like, was it random or was there like a moment of like, how did, did you just randomly feel weak or like, was there a certain kind of exercise you were doing? Yeah. So I was, I was doing bent over rows. I'm 22 years old, top of the world, like. My cockiness was through the roof, right? Go, you walk in the gym, you're like, "Oh, I'm the strongest person here." So I was, I would joke with my friends, like, "Pound for pound, I'm the strongest person in the gym," and I'm last rep, last set of a bent over row, and I'm instantly on my knees, kind of black out for a second, hear a loud pop in my back, mm. drop the weight. You know, I'm just like, "Oh my gosh, what do I do? Like, I don't think I can move." And then that started this next six months, six month journey of just like complete misery Mm. and trying to like self-medicate drinking a lot being a horrible person to my girlfriend at the time my friends everybody was just like what is going on and and, like they didn't understand that like no for me to go to class or like drive to your house to come hang out I gotta take five Advil Mm. like just to move Mm. or like for me to go to bed I had to like drink a glass of whiskey Mm. so like it was um, a six-month journey of me trying to not take pain meds, but like, okay, what's the safest thing to do? Advil versus going to get like a true narcotic, narcotic, right? So that's what I was doing. And I just became a person I didn't like. Mm. And that was my six months of me trying to figure out what the heck am I going to do? Good thing is I was in school and good thing is I did finally find somebody who listened and helped me. Mm. And then I went to the chiropractor one adjustment, I was 80% better. And I was like, I just wasted six months. I could have started this journey way earlier Mm. and not been where I am today. How many people did you see before you found someone that can actually help you? Five. 
five. Yeah. Okay. You know, I think it's always interesting because it's kind of like a doctor or just even like uh, therapy or any of that sort where, you know, it's always recommended to keep looking until you find mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. that works for you. So, um, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting you say that. So in that time that you became this person, you didn't like, were you aware of this? Because I feel like a lot of times situations in life, whether it's physical pain, mental health or whatever, yeah. maybe sometimes we were not aware this is happening. Yeah. Did Were you aware this was happening in your experience? It, the last tail end, yes. Mm. The front of it, no. Because I, I don't think people, until you've had debilitating back pain, it's hard to express what that pain feels like in words Mm. um how like have you had a like a back injury that's like oh my gosh i can't walk or Mm -mm. anything like that no you hurt your arm and you're like oh i'll be okay Mm -hmm. you hurt your back and you like you really think like oh this is it Mm. it's that's kind of been the big difference that i've seen now two years doing this and being around a bunch of people it's like as soon as you hurt your back and like oh i can't walk it's it's way different than I broke my arm or I tore my rotator cuff or tore my meniscus. It's like I don't know how to move from point A to point B. I have to now just brace my whole body just mm. to keep moving there. It's mm-hmm. exhausting um, just to think like I got to brace my core to walk to the couch. Yeah. I got to brace my core to go to the bathroom, right? And I don't think people understand that. And I didn't understand it. And I didn't know how to express that to people. And that may have, may have been the one of the reasons mm. I did see more people because I wasn't communicating that well. But I do think it's it's something hard to express to somebody like, okay, like this is really painful for me mm. to like sit in the car. Like I had to drive from Fort Worth to UTA here in Arlington for a class, summer class. I would literally have to stop halfway, get out, stretch. Wow. And then get back in the car to go to class. Yeah. Like, that's how bad it was. Yeah. I I don't want to ever experience that. Yeah, no. <laughs> I can't it, even imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So with with a chiropractor that you saw that basically made everything about 80% better, mm-hmm. um, like, what, what, what did he do differently that everybody else didn't? Yeah, I think I've been in the space of... I of the health and wellness, I was actually working in a physical therapy clinic at the time and they were actually like really good therapist, but they weren't, I was saying, Hey, it hurts right here. Mm. Like I I need you to like press here. I can't press there on my back. Mm -hmm. Right. I need you to press here and I need you to like, I feel stuck right here. Looking back at my imaging, it's like, it's L3. I feel like L3 is just stuck. And You know, the physical therapists were like, okay, let's just try these exercises, do a little bit of, little bit of massage. But like, then I went to the chiropractor and he, okay, let's do some soft tissue on the area, really address this, kind of address the surrounding areas. And then I'm going to adjust this segment. And as soon as he adjusted it, it was like a thud. It was Mm. like, boom. My back was just like, so good. And then we did some exercises afterwards. And so like, okay, let's now let's really try to lock this in, kind of do some exercises that really help really with the core with some extension. And after that is like, I can breathe again. Like I can walk to the car and not feel like I'm out of breath because I'm just trying to like brace for mm-hmm. security. So that was really nice. Yes. Yes. Okay. That, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Now, when you were going to school, were you going to school to become a chiropractor or... Uh, did this experience kind of push you that way? How did that happen? Yeah, so I was at I was at TCU studying kinesiology. Like I said, I, want, I knew I wanted to be in mm-hmm. the health wellness space, but I didn't know really what I wanted to do. After TCU, I started the that moment I went to chiropractor. He was like, he put the seed in, back in my mind. Okay, maybe I should really look more into this to go to chiropractic school. Um, and I asked him. I was like, looking back, he's been in it now for twenty years. What would you do different? Hmm. If if you could go back today and start over, what would you do? He's like, I'd do it cash based. I would treat longer, and I wouldn't deal with Medicare, which is just unfortunate. But um, but I would spend more time with my patients, and I would try to create more of a relationship hmm. style of practice versus a, hey, you're in pain, just come in. You're patient eighty five of the day. 
Mm -hmm. I got to go to lunch, right? So I think that's a what I took into this going into school. Okay, how do I create this model? Cash base, build a relationship, spend more time with people, address what they actually need and what they want, what's their goal, and that's the mo the model that we created. Okay, yeah, I, I love that because it, it sounds like sometimes, you know, you go to just, um, you know, even say say just a doctor that has their actual just agenda or their, their curriculum they have to go by, yeah. um, and they have so much time to treat all these patients mm -hmm. that a lot of times is counterproductive because you're not really providing the help that can actually get that person moving on with their life, mm -hmm. a better life. Um, so, okay. Now, what are, what are some of the things that, um, uh, like, for example, for patients that go to places that, say, Medicare accepts, like, are they, like, are they, like is there something they're not supposed to do with their clients that may be running something, like, more private um, uh, or client-focused? Uh, are there any differences there? Yeah, for sure. So Medicare only covers the adjustment. Mm. So if say you're 65 and older, you're on Medicare, right? You go to the, the Cairo, it's only going to cover the adjustment. Mm. So if I wanted to do like soft tissue work or massage or whatever for your low back, I then can't bill for that massage or whatever. Okay. I can only get reimbursed for the adjustment. I see. So at a certain point, what's the point of mm. me doing that if I'm not going to pay for it? Right. So that's the insurance dictating care. Okay. Which is what we're trying to avoid. Right. I want you to dictate our care, not the insurance. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That that makes that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so you saw an opportunity, like you had this experience, you weren't getting the help, you finally found it. And you're like, hey, this is something that maybe the community, the people need. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you go back you go to chiropractic school. Um, and how, how was that experience for you? What did, what did you learn? Yeah, it was great. Um, getting around, it was the first time, you know, TCU was amazing. Um, my other undergrad Hendricks college was, was amazing, but it was the first time like everybody's there on the same mission, right? You go to classes that you actually enjoy you. Okay. This class leads into this class leads into this class. That was fun. Um, and then you got to be hands-on with your classmates mm. and then that transferred into the clinic um and then i was also in daytona beach so that was oh well, that's nice yeah that was pretty nice <laughs> so we would you know get out of class hey who wants to go to the beach and study yeah you know you're reading flashcards on the beach mm. or your anatomy textbook while you watch the sunset that's that's a pretty good place to study yeah no kidding no kidding so and then you you mentioned you worked at at a place yourself mm -hmm. um where did you work um, so I for work chiropractic. Uh, ask that again. For uh, for and chiropractic, uh, like uh, you you worked as a chiropractor, not in your own place before you oh, opened yeah, yeah. up your own yeah, space. So I did a stint um, at Chiro Sports Specialist in Dallas with Troy Van Beesen and Chris Miller. Um, they are top of the game, really. You know that clinic sees the Dallas Stars, a bunch of the PGA guys. Um, they get Mavericks that come in. They get Cowboys that come in. Um, they are just a great clinic, um, mm. and those two guys are amazing clinicians. Um, they were kind of doing it all, uh, but they're insurance. So I still didn't want to do insurance, and they're still – the cool thing what they were doing is they were doing um, the treatment, 15, 20 minutes of treatment on the table, adjustments, cupping, soft tissue, all that stuff. But they were also doing rehab, but they were doing that with um, with the tech. Mm. Um, so they're like when I was there, I was kind of the tech, um, which was helping them do the rehab. So I got to learn under them a lot of the rehab stuff. Uh, I would sit in there with them at, in the room while they're doing treatment, and then be like, "Okay, Colton, based on what you saw today, take them out there for for the rehab." Mm, okay. Okay. What are some of the key things that you learned from them, whether it's, you know, hands on or maybe just business wise or relationship wise? What what were what would you say the, the biggest takeaways were from working with these guys? Give your honest 
best opinion, don't sugarcoat it. Mm. People, you know, their friends have sugarcoated, oh, you're going to get surgery, it's going to, you'll be okay or Mm. whatever. It's like, give them all the information that you can so that way they can make the best decision about their health. Mm. I feel like that's, yeah, that's kind of, you go to the doctor, right? And it's like, here, we're going to do this. And you're like, why? Like, what's, why didn't, like, I've never heard that before. What are we doing? It's like, no, let's give them all. Here's what, here's what I recommend. Here's what you presented with. All the, lay it all out there. Put all the cards on the table. Mm. And I say, of the 52 cards here, right, I think Ace of Hearts is the best thing for you. Mm -hmm. And then they'll be like, they'll better understand, okay, this is serious. This is probably my best option. I'm going to pick that. Ace of hearts. I see. I see. Yeah. No. I, I. I love that because at the end of the day, you're you're ex, you're explaining, which means they're understanding, um, and they can choose the best option mm-hmm. for them while right. also giving them your professional advice. Right. Yeah. I. I think more places should practice like yeah. that. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Um, and so, you know, opening up. What What inspired you to open up your own space? You know, because you could have been working under, you know, other great locations as right, well. For sure. Um, so what what would you say like um like what inspired you? What what sets you apart? Yeah, I think one, it's let's build relationships first and make good decisions that way. Um, but two, like the whole reason I named the company Patriot was I I want to do this, eventually we'll turn it into a nonprofit and we'll start helping veterans active duty. Uh, when I was in cl- when I was mm. in student clinic, um, my neighbor actually, I'm out there walking my dog. My neighbor walks out. He's like, "Hey, aren't you a Cairo student at the school down the street?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "You think I could come in and come see you?" I'm like, "Sure, yeah, man. What's going on?" He's like, "I was in the military." Um, let me describe this guy to you. Okay, he's six six, about two sixty five, just a big human, <laughs> like. You, you would not want to break into his house. I'll tell you that. Um, and he has this little dog. It's so funny. Um, and he comes in the office and just a, a sweet Southern draw guy. I think he's, I believe he's from Mississippi. And he's talking real slow. And he was like, I was in Afghanistan. Um, and I got after, or then I got discharged from this. But I was in Afghanistan. We're under fire. I got all my gear on. I jump over a wall into a well. Mm. So the wall's six feet tall. He probably jumped that with no effort at all, right? <laughs> wall Just six hopped feet over. Tall. Yeah, and he goes into the well. So he lands 15 feet down in this well wow. with all his gear like right on his butt. So that just crushed his spine. Wow. So he, you know, they did, they did surgery on him. They tried PT on him in the military didn't get better. They eventually had a medical discharge him. So hundred percent disability. Now he's just kind of like thrown out in the world. Good Mm -hmm. luck. Right. Yeah. Yeah, You have disability, but like that doesn't really give you a purpose or a plan to get better. Right. Right. He's already a dad. Um, His son actually lived in Texas. So he would go back and forth from Florida to Texas. um, And he was, dating this this new girl and they he was like I'm we're going to get married soon and I want to be a father again but I know like because of my situation I haven't been a great dad mm. for my son I want to make sure I'm a better father for my future kids and a better husband for my my wife and I just don't feel like at the end of the day I can be that person for them cuz I have to go to work and still make money but I'm in so much pain mm-hmm. and it's like I've been to the VA I hate going to the VA. They're not helping me. They're just saying, here, take these pills. Mm. And he's like, what can you do for me? And I was like, here we go. Get on the table. Let's get to work. I started doing my thing with him, you know, do the soft tissue. We're stretching. We're teaching him some corrective exercises and all this kind of stuff. And he's like, where has this been the last six years that I've been in all this pain? The VA has all the resources in the world. And they're just giving p- p- uh, pills. Here, here's a pill. Here's a pill. Let's up your dose, right? Or let's <laughs> let's change brands, right? Jeez. So that that guy's name is Ricky. Ricky was the first kind of real impact person in in my life that was like, 
there is a void mm. that needs to be filled. Mm. That a lot of people like, oh, it'd be really nice to help those guys, right? Right. But it's just not coming across. So There's and, not closing the gap yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. So can we close that gap a little bit more? And then one more story. We, um, I start, so that was like, okay, Patriot, that's what we're doing. And I, I kind of thought of this foundation and like how to do it. I didn't really understand it. I knew I wanted to do something for charity. I thought it would maybe be like me just donating my time. Right. Then I, so I started Patriot. We're open for maybe two months and I'm to fill that time. Cause I, I had four patients the first month, right? <laughs> so I still had a bunch of time. So I was working at the joint to just kind of make min- ends meet. This guy walks in. He's about, I'm going to say he's 60. Slower. Uh, you could tell he's been in pain for a while. And he gets off the table. He starts to walk out. And he turns around. It's me and actually another doc in there who was former military. He turns around and he's like, hey, guys, I just want you to let you know, like, Today was the day I was going to kill myself in the car if you guys didn't help me. Yeah. Like, I, it was a Thursday at 4 o'clock, and you're just like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like, what in the heck, you know? And he turns around, he stops, so he's like, I waited till all my kids graduated college. I made sure they were set. And then it was finally time for me to just be selfish and deal with this. And that at that moment, when he was like, you guys changed my life. I feel like I can give my kids something more now because I'm not in so much pain. Mm. That, like, I was like, okay, I thought I had a mission. Now I have a mission with a target. Here's the top of the hill. Here's the flag. We're, we got to create this foundation. We got to get, we got to save guys like this sooner. Mm. Right? Mm. If I could, I bet that guy would find a way to, to, make a trillion dollars if he could go back to when his kid was five years old and he's not in pain. Yeah. Right. And he could spend that time again with his family. Like we got to help those guys out. Yeah. And the military is an amazing sacrifice that these Mm -hmm. men and women could take. And can I, who didn't serve, can this be my way to, to give back? Um, to to my community and to my country, right? And to the people that are keeping us safe. Yeah, no, that's very honorable. And, you know, what a a mission, right? Based on just these experiences that have knocked on your door and while you've also been open to seeing them, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, And, and, you know, it's a difference too of like saying, oh yeah, that's unfortunate. We hope you get help. And it's another thing to say, hey, I'm going to, pick up the shovel and I'm going to do what I can to help out for sure. Yeah. The country and, and, you know, the people in our country, our neighbors. Yeah. Um, so that's very admirable. So thank you for doing that. Well, it's, we're just so early in the process and it's, it's where I want to get the, the cool thing is, is this was kind of like a 10 year goal for me. All right. In 10 years, we'll have this foundation. We'll do the thing. What's been awesome is the success we've had in, July marks two years of being two years of being open. The success we've had in this two years is we've reached more goals in this first two years than I thought we would be in the first five years. Wow. So like because of the people that have come in and like bought into our system and keep referring and all this kind of stuff, like we can move that that ball way faster down down the field. Yeah. Than the ten year mark and hopefully. Um, the goal is by the end of this year to have the foundation established and the next year, like, we're, okay, we're, can we do our first fundraiser by the end of 2025 and can we just start going? Um, and, and what's the, the name of your foundation? So like, we're, we're still working on okay. that. Um, I, I've played with the idea of something with the well, cause like Ricky fell in the well, like, can we get him out of the well? Like there's a lot of people that feel stuck mm. in the well. Um, so we're working on that. Um. When I do know, I will let you know for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Patriot is kind of oversaturated in the foundation world. So that's okay. We'll, we'll still find a way to co- incorporate that. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, the, the, the intention behind it, I guess it's, it's what matters. And um, I'll be looking forward to look into that yeah. and um, assist even with um, 
with uh, that foundation. I, I love the idea and I love, you know, where it's going. Um, you know, uh, and when, when you started, was this a one man thing? Um, did you have maybe a group of other peers that were on the same page with you? How did, how did this happen? I went in, this is what I want to do in the, in the school. And I said, was the day I graduate, I'm going to try to get this thing going. And it was just me. Just you. Just me answering wow. the phones for a while, sending all the emails, sending all the text. Uh, now we have um, another doctor, great admin. Uh, so we're growing the team. I've joined a couple coaching groups that have been super helpful in accelerating my success. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been me and it's been, okay, who can we – really selectively let in that, you know, buy into our core values, buy into our mission. Mm -hmm. Hey, I don't want somebody who's like, I don't want to help these people. Like, Just I'm, there for a check. Right, just there for a check. I want somebody who, hey, we might treat this person for free today. Just trust me. And like, that. this is why. Yeah. And that, you know, that's, that's what we want. Yeah, I see. I see. And, you know, you, you've, you've mentioned, especially with these uh, stories that, that have really, uh, I guess, kind of sharpened your vision. Um, I, I feel like, and even your your own story yourself has a lot to do with even the mental health, which um, we see a lot of it mm -hmm. overall mm -hmm. everywhere, right? So, I mean, I, I can't imagine having already life without any sort of, say, physical constraints already can be tough. Now, I can see how maybe an injury or having something you haven't been able to treat, whether it's a regular person or somebody from... Um, the military. So how, how do you approach, you know, the, the physical pain itself or whatever they're experiencing and also how it's affecting their mental state? How do you approach that? Or yeah. do you? Yeah, no, it's, um, I like to ask this question to my patients. It's like, all right, you've been dealing with this for, let's say a year. Okay. So you came in like my shoulder pain, whatever. I like to ask them like, okay, what, what do you feel like has been your limiting factor for you not to get better by yourself. Mm. Okay. That's a good question. Yeah. And then, so that really makes, that's the first time probably somebody's asked them that question. So I like, take time, <laughs> answer it, right? How's your sleep? How's your diet? Mm. How's between the ears? Right? If you're constantly dealing with a problem, you're constantly giving, say, you have 100 units of energy, and you're constantly giving 20 in units of energy to your shoulder, right? That's just going to wear you down. Mm -hmm. mentally, physically, both. And then you start like, okay, you, you say you really like your gym you go to. That's your community, right? How is that, how is that shoulder injury affecting how you interact with your community? Mm. Oh, like maybe I skip a couple workouts or, hey, we're doing this competition. I can't do it because of my shoulder. I know they'd have a lot of pressing motions that day for the comp. So I'm not going to go because I'm embarrassed. Like, why are you embarrassed because you're in pain? Like, that mm. shouldn't – if you're in pain, that means you're in pain, right? That shouldn't be something that you have to completely modify your life for and miss out on mm. just because your shoulder hurts, your back hurts, your knee hurts. So getting people to start thinking about how this might be affecting how they interact at work, how, you know, I can't pick up my kids because my back hurts. How does that affect your kids? Mm. How does that affect your husband, right? Like – that kind of goes downstream a little bit further and you're like, oh yeah, this is maybe more than, I mean, I should be selfish in this moment and treat my injury and get the help that I need versus putting that burden also on other people. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I you know, I love the, the questionnaires because even sometimes maybe people don't even ask themselves mm -hmm. these questions. Um, you know, maybe other healthcare, maybe don't, but especially within themselves, mm -hmm. right? Uh, maybe they they don't have the time, or they just don't know to dig dig deeper, right? Um, and so I like how you take a, a holistic approach with even um, you know their nutrition mm -hmm. and such. Um, when when if if you see maybe somebody can go a better route, do you have like people you reference them? with um for nutritional purposes or do you help them with that yourself or yeah definitely we have we have great community partners where we really say like they can give you more more time and energy on this subject like nutrition mm -hmm. right um let's go talk to 
this nutrition coach. Let's go talk to this gym. They have a great nutrition program. You're already there. So like I tr- we try really hard to build those connections in the community. So like if you say you um, like a local plug here, um, say you went to CrossFit Iron Horse, which is right down the street from us. They send us people all the time or vice versa. We send people to them, but they ask, okay, what I have this shoulder issue or whatever. I feel like I've not been going to the gym as much. Get, I've started to gain some weight, whatever. It's like, okay, that's fine. Let's fix your shoulder. Right. But let's also go talk to coach Libby or coach Bo or whatever. And let's get a one-on-one with them as well. Mm-hmm. And they can start dialing in your nutrition a bit more. Okay. And let's attack it from from both sides, right? The name of the game is inflammation. You mm. can't, yeah. You can't have pain without inflammation. You get, But you can't have inflammation without pain. So any inflammation we can reduce, the better the system will work, right? Ooh. Can we remove traffic from the highway so your body can run at 100 miles an hour like it wants to? I like that analogy. Yeah. That makes that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, and so a lot, you know, a lot of the foods we eat, I mean, uh, cause inflammation. And for sure. So, for sure. Um, and, and so I like how you work with people, other because uh, sometimes it's hard, right? Like as a citizen, say somebody do- doesn't have a, a particular gym, or say they just go to say Planet Fitness, mm-hmm. where there's no actual like expertise there to help you in these categories. Um, that you have people you reference them with so that they can continue helping every angle because it's not just a one thing like, okay, I'm just going to fix this and that's going to fix everything else. Right. Um, um, so I think that that is that is huge, having a community that can tackle different aspects that overall give you a better uh, lifestyle. Right. Um, and so early on you mentioned um, a lot of the focus is people that are – active and want to continue being active. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah, for sure. Is that what you said? Um, lifelong athletes, life, yeah. And, you know, what, what, and, and also just, you know, people that have served or veterans, what are some of the differences you've seen with like, say veterans, um, and just like the regular person out there being active? What would you say? Difference between veterans and the average person, mm-hmm. right, is I not to, like, downgrade the average person, right? I would say the veteran really understands pain, mm. right? They, they've seen death probably, right? They've, they are closer to it, closer to that source of pain. Mm. So when they're saying, hey, this hurts, like, I'm – this is a 6 out of 10 pain – I'm thinking, okay, they understand what a 6 out of 10 pain is mm. versus when I have somebody else come in, like, oh, I'm a 6 out of 10 pain. Like, all right, that's like you're looking for some real help at 6 out of 10 and you've been dealing with this for three or four years, right? Or I'm an 8 out of 10 pain. It's like, are you really? It's like we're going to the hospital, you know? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. when somebody from the military world comes in and they're like, I'm really in pain, I, okay, like, this is really serious. It's more than Advil is not going to help. It's, oh, you're out of Advil. Mm. We need to get you going. I see. I see. And, you know, this is like I, I, I love overall like, you know, what you're doing and the direction you're going. And you mentioned a few things that have inspired you. Um, overall, like you knew you wanted to help be somewhere in the healthcare mm-hmm. active world. Um, like before you even say – before you even went into college, like, was there anything in particular that inspired you? Um, I know you were in sports yourself, so, um, but was there any particular person, event, or thing in your in your early years? Yeah, so I was, you know, played every sport possible growing up. I got to my junior year, and I was like, okay, like, college sports are on the table. Let's see what we can do. Um, broke my ankle. <laughs> in basketball season. So that that was the start, right? And like we did not really have great healthcare coverage, so it was kind of like just rest and get some the ice. Boot, put some ice on it, you know, and then I probably didn't rehab that like I should have. Mm. I got back to like finally playing again and instantly broke my other ankle. Mm. So <laughs> biggest predictory to injury 
is former injury. Mm. So the fact that it was the other ankle means I was, you know, it was kind of a freak accident, but like that was that, right? I rehabbed the second one, which was way better than the first one. My Come my senior year, ankles are doing a lot better. Uh, that probably took me out of sports for four months. So that's four months of like solid training that I could have used to like get better and like maybe go to the next level, X, Y, Z. Senior year, I started having shoulder issues and I was like, mom, like we can't just rest this. Like mm. I can't shoot the basketball. Like that's kind of important. So, um, so I finally went to PT and I had a great, great PT physical therapist. Uh, his name is Sam. I actually ended up working for him in, in college, which was good. And he taught me a lot and he just like really educated me on the body and why we're doing this, why we're doing that. And, you know, I would try to schedule with him at times where I knew he would be less busy so I could get more time with him. Um, but it was to the point where in basketball season, I was, you know, taped up. Um, I was just kind of pushing through the pain there on naproxen before the game and anti-inflammatories, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. So basketball season, got through it, but then it came to – baseball season and I was like I cannot I was a shortstop I, was like, I cannot throw from shortstop to first without pain I think that's kind of important right yeah so I had to move to second and we got to the point where it's like in practice I would take infield right and I would just roll the ball to first because mm. the throws weren't worth the pain the pain wow. so game day I would basically leave at lunch go to physical therapy and come back right before the game And then, like, maybe throw, like, five times and then play the game. Wow. And that was that. And I was like, this is, like, it has to be better than this. So that kind of really put the seed in my head of, like, there's something more out there. Like, Mm. there's kids like me all over the country who are, like, could take a next step, right? Could take the next level or could just have fun their senior year of high school with their friends (laughs) <laughs> and enjoy it, right? So can we remove some of those barriers to to that experience? And you were asking yourself these questions at that age. Yeah, for wow. sure. Yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty impressive. It sounds like uh and the fact that you were you would continue playing sports cuz you wanted to do that regardless of the pain. I right. mean, you would try to tackle that as as good as you could. So uh, wow, that's actually pretty crazy. It was, it was, uh, it was what did t- your parents think of that? Did they, they support you? They did. They, they, I mean, I had the best parents in the world. Um, super blessed to have that situation, but you know, they were very much on board. Like, okay, we got to do what it takes. We like, we know you want to go play college. So we're going to try to give you the best opportunity to do that. And like me cutting out at lunch to go to physical therapy, right. Was kind of what we had to do. Um, Good thing is I was decent at school, so that helped a lot. But, um, mm. yeah, they were super on board, and, like, they understood that, like, it just – if you want to get to the next level, you got to do what most people aren't willing to do. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, that's really good advice. Yeah, yeah that's that – that is good <laughs> – good parenting i mean the fact that they supported you right even doing what whatever that would would you drive yourself or did they have to drive you i would drive myself okay yeah okay i remember the day i got my car um it was funny i i got the car and i was all the way in burleson from six just turned 16 took the cash like saved up all the money got got the car right i'm in burleson and i'm like Okay, I've never, like, I've driven by myself, but, like, not really. But I was like, okay, I have to go to basketball practice now in Carrollton. So I drive from Burleson <laughs> to Carrollton, first time driving this car. And, like, I hadn't really done that many highway miles at that point. But, like, Burleson to Carrollton is, is a good ways. Yeah. Um, but I drove that whole way with a big grin on my face. <laughs> wow. So, you know, um, I'm gathering that you're pretty dis- self-disciplined. How, how did it... Like, have you always been this way? Where did you think you got it from? Or how, how was this developed? What What do you think? Looking yeah, back. Looking back, I think it really, it's um, nurture versus nature. Maybe a little bit of nature, but a lot of nurture. 
my parents, you know, they have a small business here in uh, in town. They do custom draperies, interior design, all that stuff. I grew up, like, hearing the front door close at, like, maybe, like, 5 a.m. And Mm -hmm. that was my mom going to work. So, like, I just grew up, like, we, we never... We always wanted things, right? But we never needed things because my parents just provided, right? It was cool seeing, like, you know, we grew up, we would take to lunch, like, Vienna sausages. And then, like, by the time we got older, like, we're having good homemade lunches. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just good to see that transition. Like, they started a small business. Now the business does really well. But, like, I got to kind of see that all the way through growing up, which is um, a luxury to see what hard work really can do for a family and shaping the future generation. Were you involved with, uh, with like when they were, you know, growing their business? Oh, for were you sure. Involved? Yeah, okay. yeah, for sure. So, um, so after school, we'd get dropped off at the shop. We wouldn't really go home. Uh, we'd get dropped off at the shop and we would take the trash out, sweep, do chores around the office. Cause it's kind of a semi construction environment, you know, we're cutting, drapery rods there's extra fabric there's like trash and all this stuff so we were free labor for that which is good and then in the summer times mom would make the stuff make the drapes dad would install the drapes mm. so in the summertime i was the the errand boy i guess mm-hmm. um here colton hold this run to the car get this so i would got to just see how you know start to finish what they were making and where it was going. And probably the coolest thing was my mom and dad very much taught me like how to interact with people that we were installing the people of the homeowners. Oh, right. How, how did they do that? So, Hey, we're going to this house. These are the people like say it's the Joneses, right? This is Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Like they might come talk to you. Like how often do you see somebody working and then their 12 year old son, standing there like helping right mm-hmm. that's pretty rare but so if they come and talk to you like talk to them you know ask them how their day is get to know them a little bit ask them what to do for work you know it's cool you walk into this three million dollar home at 12 years old like our home isn't a three million dollar home so like it's cool to like see what what the future is like what's out there and like the potential the potential right and you're just in it five times a day you do five houses in a day like that's pretty cool and you get to, oh, this person does banking. This person is a doctor. This person is a lawyer. This person invented this thing, right? It's like, oh, this person built this thing that goes on a boat that does this certain thing. And he takes you in his office and he shows you this trinket that he invented when he was 22 years old. And now he has this great family, great house, all this kind of stuff. So just being around that was a super unique experience mm. um, that you know, without my parents and their business, I don't know if I would have made half the decisions in my life. So, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's very, very interesting. Um, you know, as, as when we're growing up, I mean, that's kind of like what starts shaping us and how we view the world Mm -hmm. and the ideas and what we want to do when we grow up. So, um, you know, that's why I, as a parent myself, I kind of wonder, okay, what, what did his parents do, you know, that made them, uh, especially from your point of view, speaking very highly of your parents, um, it's it's interesting, right? And for any parents listening, it's like, you know, sometimes there's a lot of the questions, oh, everybody wants to be a good parent, but sometimes um, you don't know how to. Right. Um, so hearing stories such as yours from, you know, a son's perspective, um, it's really, really interesting. Um, so thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I think I've heard both my parents have told me this. It's like, we wanted to create a life way better than what we had. Mm. So we're going to show you our mistakes and also our growth points. Mm. So that way you can learn both sides. So that way you, hopefully you make less mistakes down the road. Mm. I think that was a, a great experience and a great teaching opportunity for them. It's like, Hey, we could have done better here. Yeah. We did really good here. Like, let's celebrate this moment. Let's try oh. not to make that mistake again. Yeah, no, that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's huge, huge. Um, wow, that's, that's. I mean, it, it speaks a lot to, you know, where you're at, you're at today, uh, what your goals are, and you're inspired to continue 
helping. Mm-hmm. Um, where where do you plan on on what's like your goal with with Patriot Chiropractic? Yeah, so we are constantly trying to grow, constantly trying to build a team. Uh, it's July marks year two, so next month year two. Um, we want to take it to a one stop shop. Oh. So that's really what we really want to do. We want to incorporate nurse practitioners in our office. We want to incorporate strength conditioning in our office. We want to incorporate recovery in our office. We have chiro physical therapy. Can we add everything in one shop Mm. under one roof? So, you know, a lot of times people's pain point is, all right, I got to drive to this doctor on Tuesday. Mm. I got to drive to this location on Wednesday. I got to drive to this thing on Friday, right? For a lot of people, like, you can pay with time or you can pay with money. Mm-hmm. At a certain point, like, your time is worth a lot of money. Yeah. So can we save time and spend money just at one place and make it a better experience? And also the added benefit of, say, you're the nurse practitioner, I'm the Cairo, and Logan's the strength conditioning coach. We're all going to communicate together mm-hmm. to give you the best experience and, hey, let's let's make you feel like Wolverine and make that your new normal. Yeah, that is huge. And that's a great vision because if anything, like um like we go to Lifetime as well. Um and what I love about Lifetime is that um, you know, they have a lot of things in one place. Mm-hmm, you know, they mm-hmm. have the pool, the outside with, you know, the um uh like the Tennis activity course, yeah, yeah. They, and so they have uh you know the steam room the sauna for just females and for like mm-hmm. both males and females and they have you know instructors and they have pickleball and pickleball so it's like a whatever you want to do they even have like martial arts classes right, yeah. for the kids they have a daycare um you, you can rent space if you want to have events for parties or whatever um um, and so I, I like the fact that they have a lot in one, yeah. right. And that's like the, the, in that world. So, um, and I don't think there's really nothing right now as far as the, your, what your vision is. Correct. Yeah. I, I mean, there's places out there that do it all under one roof, but they still piece it out. So Myra, what do you want to do today? Would you like an IV today? Sure. We'll do an IV. What do you want to do? You come back tomorrow. What do you want to do today? Um, I'm feeling a little tired. What can you do for me? It's like, okay, you're, you didn't go to school for all this, Mm. right? You should be coming to us with, Mm. Hey, here's my pain point. Can you make my life better? Not, can you just fix this one thing? Yeah. And I think people value are starting to value that, especially since COVID of, can my doctors communicate? Can I, everybody be on the same page? Right. And get this going. Like I hear it all the time, especially in women's health. Um, patient comes in. I went to this um, endocrinologist for this thing, and then went to my primary care for this thing, and they recommended two different things to solve the same problem. Mm. So now they're like, "Well, what do I do?" Mm-hmm. So then I'm like, "Okay, let's let's look at this, and then let's look at this. Let's maybe pick a plan that works better for you, or let's find somebody who." takes a more holistic approach mm. and see if we can address it with not necessarily a drug, but like, can we clean up your diet? Can we clean up what drugs you are taking? Can we detox your system? Like that kind of stuff. I think that is the, the average person doesn't know. Like they didn't go to school for eight, 10 years, right. For health and wellness. They, right. They're an accountant. Yeah. They're, they're good at numbers. That's, you know, that's what they're good at. They're not good at making people healthier. Right. Yeah. No, that's, I, I'm, I really love that vision truthfully because I think it's definitely a game changer, um, especially with, with people that, uh, cause you know, also you gotta, if you find a provider that you trust, yeah. um, or, or, you know, a, um, a healthcare doctor, mm-hmm. chiropractor, um, you name it, that you trust and, and you you like how they work and their mission and how they do things. And then you can find 
other similar things that you need in your life to be better, and it's all in the one stop shop. Yeah. Um, I you, mean, yeah, and you know that they they're not going to recommend something that goes against your your goal, right? right? Or that you have to go and ex- re-explain everything and all this different communication and filling out paperwork. It's all right there. Right. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's definitely a game changer. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping it is. Yeah. Right. And I mean, I think COVID really opened everybody's eyes to like nobody's communicating here mm. for my health. Mm. Right. CDC is saying something. White House is saying something. Yeah. Podcasts are saying another thing. Yeah, like my neighbor's saying something else, right? You know, so it's, can we just communicate better, Mm. one voice, right, for you Mm. versus Mm -hmm. maybe this works for the masses? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, And speaking of COVID, how did how did that change? I mean, it it impacted everybody in several different ways. So I'm glad you kind of bring it up. Um, How did it shape your world in a in a way? Yeah, I think it. It's, or reshape. Yeah, I think it's solidified my idea of mm. like one-on-one personal care is is the future, right? Mm. People want that kind of concierge feel to what, what we have to offer. Um, I think for healthcare in general, it was good but bad at the same time. I If there is another pandemic, I don't think anybody middle class or higher will go to a primary care anymore. Mm. They don't want to be lumped in with everybody. Mm. They want a specialist or they want somebody who knows them, right? Mm. Just showing up at the ER, I don't feel good. Nobody wants to do that, right? Yeah. So I think a lot of people started exploring there's something better than public health out there, right? right? There's private health where people care. You might pay a little bit more money, but like you know that money is getting used more productively mm-hmm. versus what did I just, you get a check back from your doctor and it's 20 things on there. It's like, what is, I, I don't even, I saw this doctor for five minutes and it's yeah, $800, or, right? Right. Or the easy one fix that they try to, which is not really a fix, uh, which is like popping pills. Right, exactly. Um, versus doing actually something that... Uh, like a plan of action, right? More so. Uh, so for for like people that you know want to just say they're not feeling anything crazy right now, but they they want to live like a like a good good lifestyle. Maybe maybe some stretches, daily stretches that they can do. What what would be something you you recommend? Um, Got to get into a gym. Mm. Only eleven percent of the population has a gym membership. Oh, interesting. Crazy, right? I, that could be actually lower. Wow. It might be 8%, but I, I want to say it's 11%. That That's nuts. That is right? crazy. I wouldn't have imagined that. Right. You would think that, you know, Planet Fitness is super cheap and affordable, but also like a lot of people just quit. Yeah. You know, and then they don't go back. Yeah. Um, so you got to get in the gym. So staying active is the best thing you can do. Mm. So whether that's walking your kids walking the dog, walking your husband, right? Just like staying active is the best thing you can do. The other thing that research is 100% supporting lately is muscle mass. So the more muscle mass you have, the longer you'll live. Mm. So if the, the stat is we lose 1% of muscle mass a year after the age of 30. So that's basically six months off your life yeah. every 1%. So if you can gain 1% or just maintain and not lose, mm. that is that is a huge, huge win. What are some of the actionable things um, they can do, whether it's, you know, nutrition-wise or at the gym even, yeah. f- to maintain or improve their muscle mass? Yeah. Um, if you can run, run. That That's super, super beneficial. If you can sprint, sprint. Mm. The amount of people that don't sprint after the age of 30 is like, almost everybody. So if you can get a sprint in once a week, like that's one amazing for your joints, but great for your heart, your lungs. And it's like, it's power, right? So you're putting power through your body. That's what sprinting is. Mm. That is going to be great for all your tissues and all that kind of stuff. Um, doing some sort of active recovery, whether that means like sauna, cold plunge, 
red light therapy, grounding, like the hippie stuff is, is it's not hippie anymore. It's, it's the new normal. So like, just start buying it, start reading some extra information. Like everybody Google, like what's the benefits of grounding? That's super easy. What's the benefits of red light? What's the ben benefits mm -hmm. of sauna, right? Start Googling that and taking your own education in. So that way, when you hear it on a podcast for the hundredth time, you're like, okay, mm. I know what you're talking about, <laughs> right? Yeah. So doing that kind of stuff and like really start assessing, taking a daily account. How am I feeling? I think mm. that's huge. Like you're brushing your teeth, right? Oh. How, how am I doing? Mm -hmm. Like that's a, that's a good two minutes, four mm. minutes really for most people, I hope, right? <laughs> yeah. Four minutes of you and yourself in the mirror, mm. right? Breathe, just check yourself, look in the mirror. Hey, how am I doing? You know, hey, Colton, how am I doing? Um, then have that conversation with yourself and really take, take status of like, okay, I'm a little stressed. What do I need to do to, to be less stressed by the end of the day? Mm. I think that is huge. That and is it, huge. And you grew up brush your teeth at night. What do I need to do to be less stressed tomorrow? Mm. And then most and foremost, sleep and hydration, super important. Yeah. Sleep and hydration. Um, I love that. I, I, I love the, that advice. It's kind of like, um, you know, even having that conversation in front of the mirror, you're kind of looking at yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so it's kind of like a type of medica uh, uh, meditation. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's, it's a daily reminder that I, that I probably struggle with too. It's like, sometimes I run out of the house and I'm like, did I even look at what I look like before I left the <laughs> house? Right. So just finding times to pause mm. and especially like you're, you're a mom, like you're thinking everything is your kid in front of you or your husband. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, how often are you just like, how's my feeling? Mm. Right. Like just right. taking that time to be self-aware of yourself is going to actually help you be a better mom, be mm. a better wife. And that, I think that's, what a lot of people are missing because just hustle, 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 hustle. Yeah. Take a second, breathe, see how you're doing, check in, and then how do I make it better? Take a second. Yeah. No, that's um. I th I think that is huge. Um. And I think we we don't do it enough just because we're racing with the clock most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. Um. And, and you know, forget. But these are amazing reminders that it's important. And the other thing I wanted to tackle was like the sleep because I think uh, sleep is huge. As a matter of fact, just this weekend, um, I was talking to my uh, cousin's wife um, and my cousin, he's, he's a lawyer. And she was saying how like she, and she's a teacher and she's like, I love sleeping. Like she has no problem yeah. sleeping. <laughs> And my cousin, her husband, was is like, hey, you're wasting your life sleeping. Like, mm -hmm. get up and do things. And he's very rarely sleeps. Um, like, he's he like his sleep schedule is terrible. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I was having this conversation. I'm like, hey, like, actually sleep is huge. Like, you need to sure. recover yeah. so that you can be productive. I mean, it's it kind of – it's like actually kind of counterproductive, 100%, 100%. right, from what I've learned. So – I don't know, you being a little bit more probably knowledgeable in this area, what can you tell us about sleep? I can tell you that I have made a full 180 on sleep, mm. right? I used to be the guy, sleep when you're dead, make fun of my friends, like get up early, go to bed late, like work harder, do more, Yep. like stop complaining. You know, um, through Cairo school, I was probably the worst example. I was, I would open the gym at Orange Theory at five. Mm. So it means I'd be there at 4.30. I would then go to school all day long, close the gym at nine, and then I had to study. Ooh. So I'm going to bed at midnight or one o'clock, up at four o'clock almost every day. Mm. And I was just like, don't sleep, just keep going, keep going. It would take me, before I felt caffeine, I was at a thousand milligrams. <laughs> That's a lot. Wow. That's a lot. So, and that was just to like get me to feel it. Right. So if you are at that point, where you're like, I'm four cups of coffee in and it's noon and I'm still not feeling the kick. Right. We probably need to focus on our sleep. <laughs> right. And the, you, you repair when you sleep. That is your body's natural time to rebuild. Ooh. So if you're not giving yourself time to rebuild, right, you're, you're sacri it's stealing resources from something else. Mm. 
So I made the big switch of once I started this business, I after year one, I literally spent this last year focusing on sleep. Mm. I knew that I could not get to the foundation because I'll be dead <laughs> if if right. I don't start sleeping. Yeah. And so I have really made that my mission of like track it, start sleeping, and try to make it better, right? Mm -hmm. Anything more than three hours or four hours what I'm getting was, was a win. But now I'm to the point of like, okay, I got eight hours of sleep. How do I feel today? I feel great. Um, I highly, highly recommend get some sort of wearable to track your sleep. Mm. I'd rather be Aura, Whoop, Apple, Garmin. Just start tracking it so you know. Then you can really start, okay, what did I do yesterday to get a horrible sleep score today? Mm. And like for me now, it's like the last couple of weeks I had friends in town and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, my sleep has been horrible. And then this past week, none of my friends are in town, haven't had a drop of alcohol a week. Sleep score has been great. <laughs> so um, just being aware of that is is very important. And it is like if you can optimize your sleep, the odds that you optimize your day are way higher. Mm. Wow. And, you know, you kind of mentioned, again, some of those self-awareness things. Yeah. Like you're tracking it. So, one, you're already aware by tracking yeah. it because you got to look at it. Um, if you have a horrible score, then, you know, you go, go back to that awareness. It's like, what did I do to get mm -hmm. a horrible score mm -hmm. and how do I change? So it really goes back to the, all, all that. And so you start functioning in your life as more like in, in consciousness yeah, for versus, sure. yeah. you know, just letting life happen to you mm. versus like experiencing life in front of you. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Boom. Yeah. No, that's, uh, and you know, I think a lot of that it's missing. We go back to, you know, sometimes some, some of us not asking ourselves those questions at all. I'm um, just going by the clock and before you know it, you're sick and you're like, what happened to my mm -hmm, life? What mm -hmm. could have I done different? Or you get an injury right. where now you, everything, your world kind of stops and not only does it stop, but you're in pain on top of yeah, that. Exactly. Uh, where now you have to kind of work backwards and start learning these things backwards mm -hmm. um, versus being proactive about it and in turn shaping your experiences and, yeah. and having more control. Right. Um, so I, 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 it's these, the, the, it's great advice. Yeah. My, one of my coaches, he, he constantly says like, it's going to happen to you no matter what, mm. how can you make it happen for you? Mm. And that's like, that's business, that's life. Right. So how can you curate that experience to happen for you instead of to you? Yeah. Yeah. Early before the podcast started, you, you mentioned, um, how you, you love the outdoors, you, you love being outside. Um, I listened to Andrew Huberman and yeah. he's, he's huge on, you know, going outside early in the day, preferably like 30 minutes mm -hmm. after you wake up and in the night so that it kind of resets your, um, your, your, your time clock and your cells, right? Yeah, it's, for sure. Um, and so on your, it, within your experience, like how, how you love it, right? So how, what do you feel? Like what, what is it? How does it change you or your mood? Yeah, I think um, one, like being outside is going to just activate some of your, like the sunlight is going to activate some of your body's like hormone responses, which is going to start turning things on and getting it activated. So like mm. the system is going to start running better. Like, okay, there's energy in the system, which mm. is great. Um, two, like f it's a, I think being out in nature is a great way to feel like it's not about me, mm. but it also gives you the point, the time to focus on you. Mm. So you go for a run by yourself, right? I, I encourage people to go get outside, go for a long walk, go for a run, Try, maybe try not using music, which is kind of crazy, but like listen to the, how you're breathing, you know, listen to the birds. Like mm. it's actually good. Like, okay, there's so much around us. And then there's like little me right here, right now, focusing on like not dying and breathing at the same time. So just, it helps you become self-aware. Something I tell a lot of young people and I even, everybody really, but if you could one time in your life, take a solo 
trip into a mountain. Mm. Pack all your stuff in a bag, right? Go out there, camp by yourself, and just you have to sit there. Like there's going to be no cell service. Like when's the last time somebody wasn't near cell service? Right. You get near, you get out of cell service, and you're pissed, right? You get out there and you're on the mountain and you're like, just you, please bears don't eat me. No cell service, right? It is the probably the best experience I've had in my life. And I think it really, at the, when I did that, it took me to the next level of like refocus. This is what I want to do. I had time to reflect on what I, you know, the past couple of years, I had time to plan future. And it's just you, nature, getting out there. I think that is one of the best things you could do for your life, especially if you're feeling like you're struggling with mental health. Um, mm. Just getting out there to be by yourself where, you know, you don't have the distractions of what the world has, right, I think is top notch. Wow. Logan, I'm packing my stuff next month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, no, yeah, it's I'll funny. Think, yeah. I've, I've told Logan, I'm like, I kind of feel like I want to take a, like a, so, and I love camping. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Thanks for planting that seed again. Yeah, I think I it, like it's, um, it's amazing. You know, like I, I'm, I'm a Christian guy and all this stuff, but a lot of people are like, Colton, why don't you go to church more? Or like, you should go to church more. You should go to church more. Like church is great. Like a community of church, getting church, surrounded by people like that is amazing. But you get on top of a mountain and you mm. feel so small and you look around, you see the beauty of it. Mm. And you're like, that is 10 times better than any Sunday service. That is I'm for getting sure. the chills. Yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah, for sure. I, I can, I can totally, totally see that. Um, so you, you took a trip by yourself. Was that, was it intentional just for this reason or? Yeah, I, I was, uh, middle of Cairo school and I was just kind of feeling burnt. Like just, I'm tired doing like way too much. I sleep in three hours, right? Yeah. Um, and I just like booked a last minute trip to Tetons in Wyoming, Mm. um, Yellowstone area. And then I just like packed as light as I could and it was funny I called my ranger friend and I was like what do I need to pack like I've never gone camping by myself and like how do I do it in like a backpack usually we mm. like car camped at a at a lake or something so you can throw everything in there and he's like send me this list no tent mm. no blanket like he this is what the list he sent me he's like you'll be fine just check the weather if it's gonna rain maybe get a tent but if it's not gonna rain you don't need a tent so I Ooh. get out there. I go from Florida at zero feet elevation to 10,000 feet elevation in a matter of hours. And I'm hiking, hiking, hiking. Get up there. It's so beautiful. Like if you've never been into one of the national parks in America, like you got to go. But like Tetons is pristine. I haven't uh, been to that one. Yes, yeah, so, that's okay. a good one. Um, get there sleeping on my sleeping bag and like a tarp on the ground. <laughs> Um, and it is amazing. Just, Mm. you know, doesn't get dark till late. Stars are beautiful. You can hear the waters come in. That night I got attacked by a porcupine. Came in, he tried (laughs) to like steal all my stuff. Um, I was like worried it was a bear. I wake up and I'm like, please don't be a bear. Please don't be a bear. And it was a porcupine. So that was good. (laughs) Um, and then the next day, like I just start going again and you know, you're out there and. I ran out of water. That was crazy. Um, mm. Passed out. Some other hikers came and like gave me some water. That was good. Uh, but that was just like a good. Hey, Colton, what are you made of? What you know? Yeah. What skills do you have? Get out there and go. That's cool. Yeah, it was a great experience. That that's really cool. That's really cool. Um, we're gonna have to do that, Logan, or I'm gonna have to do that, and you too. It'd be cool if you guys could do. Um, Maybe like one of you go first, mm. use the same map mm. and see if you can like hide something and find it. Oh, I like that. Kind of fun. Um, that would that would be really fun. But like even if you guys – say you guys go and you take your daughter with you and you go to the Tetons, right? Even you – like, all right, Logan, today's your day. Go hike. Mm. We're not going to bug you. Like we're going to stay here in town. Oh, yeah. That's and good And then too. like – We'll pick you up at the at the end of the trail mm. tomorrow. 
Oh, right. Like, yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah, right? that and is then, really cool. And then as soon as he gets back, you guys spend the day together. And then the next day, it's your turn. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's, that's great. Wow, you're full of ideas. Yeah. So that. getting out there. And then, like, once your daughter gets older, like, I say, get the kids in nature, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's amazing how many of my friends have never left Fort Worth. And I'm like, the world is a really cool space. <laughs> so, like, get out there, explore, and, and, yeah. and see it for yourself. Yeah, yeah, I know that's that that's awesome. Um, I I really love the uh, the ideas, and I mean it, it, everything. It's it's very, I mean it's all for the the self, the soul, for you, for, for the experience. I mean it all kind of ties ties really really in one. Um, yeah. So with uh, Patriot, uh, we're going in two years now in July. Um, you know, you're, you're doing all these great things. Um, how, how does that affect right? Like your, your personal life in the sense of like relationship wise, right? Because I mean, it's time consuming For running sure. a business, yeah. taking care of yourself, taking care of others. Um, how do you, how do you incorporate like your, like your community, your friends, your community or, or do you? Yeah, it's, it's super challenging, right? To to one start a business, but two to like balance life with business, especially being, you know, if you, it's funny you talk to people who've made it, right? They'll never say they're overnight success, even though like the first time you see them on Instagram, like they're already millionaires, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's hard to see to see that, and it's hard for people who are so close to it to also see it, mm-hmm. right? You, you know, you see, uh, a, a kind of paint a picture like this. I'm going to start a weight loss jersey journey. I'm going to say I'm 250 pounds, right? I take a picture day one. If I take a picture day 10, like what, what did I really accomplish? Right. If I take a picture a day 300 mm. and I'm 200 pounds, like you see some progress. Yeah. It's hard to not, for me as a business owner to like, I'm, sometimes get so micro into it that it affects my surroundings. Mm-hmm. Right? And you have to take a step back and like look at the macro of it. Like we are making progress. Mm. Like sometimes it's going to be slower than you want, you know, and like sometimes you feel like you're going downhill, but you're still going downhill in the right direction. Mm. So you just have to be aware of that. Yeah. Um, balancing life around it is, is difficult. And I would say most people would, would probably agree with this. It's like, you have to find people around you who are who understand your goal and your journey. So communicating people like when I tell people I have this foundation that I'm going to, and then I and those people know, hey, I want to help these people over here, and I got to get to here. Hey, I can't make happy hour. Mm-hmm. Hey, I can't make dinner. I got to work late. Like, okay, cool. But if you're constantly surrounding yourself with people, who are like, why can't you come to this? Why can't you come to this? It's like, oh, there's a bigger purpose here that is bigger than this one thing, right? Mm-hmm. Than this mm-hmm. one Rangers game, than this one football game, right? It's, I got to get to here. Yeah. And I need people that support me. Oh. And you got to curate your surroundings like that. I have, you know, I have a really good friend and they have friends around them that they don't get it. Mm-hmm. You know, they're very negative to be around and all this kind of stuff. And I'm just like, hey, I don't mind hanging out with you. But if, like, you're going to hang out with this group of people, like, I'm not going to hang out with you. Yeah. And they understand that. And then now that makes them aware of, like, who am I hanging out around? Right. Um, it yeah, is, the environment. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, definitely. Because, I mean, if overall your friends care about you, then they, you know, they, they should care about what's important to you. If yeah. you can't make it, it's all right. All right. Maybe next time you can. If yeah. you can't next time, well, maybe the next time you can. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I think that's... That plays also part into that mental health thing um, uh, of having an environment that can that's supportive and positive mm-hmm. and growth and all the extra activities will come. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that I didn't I didn't really expect that um, um, response, but that's that's huge. I think there's you know with any successful business, mm-hmm. like say you go from hundred thousand dollars a year to ten million dollars a year, right? You get to a, a growth point 
where the people that you were started with, you outgrow them. Mm. And the people that you're trying to get to, you're not in their ballpark yet. And then you're in this middle phase that is really, really lonely. Mm. Um, and that's the phase where you have to like grit your teeth and bear it, right? But you also like really need to find people that don't take away any of your energy. Mm. That's hard. Mm -hmm. That's really hard. That's really lonely. But also when you find those people, it's like 10x energy. Mm. So can you curate that to where it's you're minimizing what you're taking away, you're maximizing what you're putting in, which is super hard. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It, once you find those key, those key people, that's that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's huge. That's great, great, great advice because whether it's – you know, sometimes whether it's somebody reaching a super high goal or having a business or it's just the person that has their, eight, you know, nine to five with a family and their activities. And um, I think just overall choosing your, your surrounding yeah. and people that give you that good energy mm -hmm. versus taking away that energy. It's it's huge um, just to a, the, any regular person. Um how how do you find or what kind of things do you read or listen to, whether it's podcasts, books, or anything that you may recommend that has enhanced your knowledge overall in health, physical, or mental, or what what, what are your go-tos? Yeah, so everybody should probably read this book for the health side of it. Uh, it's called Outlive, Peter Atiyah. Um, he's been on Rogan's podcast plenty of times, but... Um, Love Rogan. Yep, he's great. Um, this book is where healthcare is going. Mm. Right? It is that kind of concierge, somebody understanding you as a whole, not just like you have a sinus infection, right? No, let's look at your sleep. Let's look at your hydration. Let's take all the factors of your life so we can make the best decision for you. That's kind of where it's going. The first half of that book is pretty sciencey, but he does a pretty good job of like simplifying it. So mm. the only, I've never really said this before, but like, Read the second half of the book first. Oh. If you're like, I don't want the science. I just want to know actionable things. Then go back and read the first half of the book. Mm. But if you read the first half of the book, you'll better understand why he's recommending X, Y, Z in the second half of the book. So a great book. Um, I've read it like two or three times now, so it's it's pretty good. Um, Business-wise, Dan Kennedy's great. Um, marketing guru, like he's everything marketing. He's great. Um, Hermosi, I don't know if you follow him at all. Oh yeah. He's great. Um, I've just tried to, I spend a lot of my free time asking myself the hard question. And then I really look into who can answer this question mm. or I read a book on what's my problem I'm facing now. Let's go find the book that kind of solves that problem. Mm. The only thing we have to be um, careful about, especially for business owners, is we don't get into just reading the books to read the books. Like you feel like you're accomplishing something so you, because you're reading the book. Mm. At a certain point, you do have to take the action mm. of what the book just told you to do, right? So um, I would say that is the big, the big what separates the winners from the greats. Mm is at a certain point, they just take more action than everybody else. Mm, yeah. Boom. That's 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 amazing. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, anything else that maybe I haven't covered that you would like to share? Um, if you're not going to a Cairo, find somebody, right? If you're not going to the gym, find a gym. If you can find a buddy, find a buddy. Um, new study came out that says, kind of scary, right? If you hang around unhealthy people, you're 57% more likely to be unhealthy. Mm. So curate who you hang around, right? Um, find a group, get plugged in. If you are, if you had $10,000 to invest in the market or $10,000 to invest in yourself, bet on yourself. Mm. Um, find a coach, find a, a nutrition coach, a personal trainer, a business coach, Something where you can be like, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to get better. That $10,000 would be great in the market, yes. But like your longevity and your future is is what it's for, right? If, yeah. you, if you can't enjoy it 10 years down the road because you're dead, right? Right. What, what was it worth, right, to sit in the market versus go get an experience, 
get around great people, get people that are actually cheering for you. Mm. That's that's the game changer. Love it. Love it. Now, every every episode, I end it with uh, two final questions. Let's hear it. The first one is, what is the best advice you've ever received? Best advice I ever received. Remember who's looking up to you. Mm. What would they think? Oh, what so would they think? That's that's huge. You know, um, on my like my, one of my personal core values, it's like I don't have a kid yet, but when I do, it's like when I make decisions for the business, for my life, whatever. What will my son or daughter think? Mm. Can I start programming that now? Mm so I can make better decisions versus thinking about that later. Mm, mm-hmm. So can I establish a good core core value in that right away early yeah. versus having to look back 10 years and say, uh, that was a bad decision and my son's now going to judge me for it. Yeah. It's like putting, like seeing yourself like in like third person, mm-hmm. like from mm-hmm. a different bo- body. Um, yeah. I like that. The second question is, what is your personal definition of happiness? The ability to make the choice that you want. Mm, freedom. Yeah. It's freedom is choices, right? Mm. You know, it's, do I want to buy the blue car or the red car? You mm-hmm. know, um, to have that choice is is a freedom, right? Can you make yourself where it's like how happy do I want to be mm-hmm. right and it's not the I have the thing I'm happy it's I had the ability to make the thing that mm-hmm. makes me happy mm-hmm. which is part of do the work be happy in the work not happy in the outcome oh boom well Colton thank you for sharing all of these amazing nuggets I wish you nothing but success thank you, thank you. um we're connected on social media mm-hmm. Um, which, uh, you know, um, will be connected yeah. continuously. Um, but how can people find you? How can, how can people? Yeah. Inst- Instagram's the best, um, Patriot Cairo SP. So Patriot Cairo sport performance. So Patriot Cairo SP on Instagram. Um, definitely reach out to us there. We try to give as much free education that we can on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So if you see something you you like on there, tell us so we can post more of it. Or if you see something or if you, don't see something that kind of connects with you. Hey, I want to hear more about sleep. I want to hear more about this exercise thing. Like, let us know. And we'll try to make a video that kind of curates that to you. But um, it can be reached on there. The website's there. Email's on the website. And love to connect with anybody. All right. Well, connect today. And uh, thanks for listening. And hope, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Thanks, guys.